The purpose of this video is to introduce the general concepts of a safety management system, or SMS, to the typical corporate flight department. This video is not intended to describe all of the specifics of implementing an SMS program. This segments provide an overview of the generally accepted elements and how to implement a safety management system into any size flight department. Safety management systems and safety culture are essential hallmarks of safe aviation operations. But the two are sometimes misunderstood. In this video, we'll introduce safety climate, culture, and management systems. We'll look at how to assess your existing culture and we'll provide examples of characteristics of organizations with a strong safety culture. Additionally, we'll show how you can nurture a safety culture within your organization how to achieve buy-in, and as a leader, what behaviors and actions you can demonstrate to lead by example. Let's look at Bob the manager and Bill the safety coordinator as they begin to address their safety culture. Hey Bill, you have a couple of minutes? We need to talk about something. Sure Bob, what have you got? Well, I just heard about that incident with Joe the other day. I can't believe that he didn't report it. I always thought we had a solid safety culture and that safety always came first. His actions put others at risk. That wasn't justified or by any means acceptable behavior. As our safety coordinator, what's your assessment of this? Well, Bob, this could be a symptom of either our culture or what is defined as our safety climate. I was just reading an article that lays it out pretty well. A culture is made up of a set of common beliefs. It can also be demonstrated by a set of consistent behavior patterns or how things are done in an organization. A culture is determined by the values and beliefs that underlie the actions you take. Okay, so a culture sounds more like a working environment based on trust and a shared commitment to the importance of safety. So what do you mean by climate? A climate is more a moment in time. A climate is normally defined as a set of conditions created by behaviors within which the members of the organization work and it's one of the ways in which the underlying culture is apparent. Climate is like a thermometer measuring the current temperature of an organization. What you see on the surface is a current reading taken at one point in time, a snapshot of the overall safety culture. I see your point, but I don't understand why Joe didn't report this. I can see it wasn't intentional, but not reporting it is a serious breakdown in our safety process. How could this happen? Maybe he was worried about retribution. Well, uh, do you really think that people believe that there will be retribution if they report safety events? I'm not sure, but the way to find out for certain what people think is to perform an assessment of our team members' perceptions of our culture. Well, you got a valid point. Maybe it is time to do a culture assessment. Look, let's go to my office and talk about it a little more, okay? It's critical to fully understand where you are in comparison to where you want to be. So the next step in the process is to perform a culture perception survey. You'll need to know what values, beliefs, attitudes, norms, and characteristic patterns of behavior are commonly shared and employed when managing internal and external pressures. Essentially, know the fabric of your organizational culture. More simply put, how your team members as individuals and as an organization behave when no one is watching. Safety culture perception surveys can be structured in different ways. One is a formal, third-party, anonymous, unbiased, validated survey incorporating observations and one-to-one -one interviewing, or it could be a similar survey but facilitated by resources within your organization, or it could be an informal roundtable discussion. Now let's see what happens when Bill and Bob get their team together to develop a safety strategy. Hello everyone. I want to thank you all for taking the time to be here today. I want to share with you the strategy for taking our department's safety performance to the next level. In essence, 
refining how we do what we do, and in the process, enhancing our safety culture. So with your help, let's list the benefits of improving our safety culture. Um, would someone write these on the board, please? I'll do it. Oh, great. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, so who has uh, a suggestion? Well, I think we could certainly uh, decrease our chance of losses. Great. Thanks, Zane. Okay. Somebody else? Um, enhance company image and corporate goodwill. Terrific. Thanks, Dom. What else? Greater awareness and control of workplace risks. Great, Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, moving from a reactive to a proactive safety environment. Good point, Katie. How about uh, less employee downtime? Great, Bill. Uh, we could certainly be more effective in managing our resources. Good, Zane. Thanks. Anyone else? And less stress for us. <laughs> good one. Okay. Thanks. That's, uh, that's a good list. Now, so we want to reduce workplace risks and give every team member a chance to participate in the safety process. Ultimately, the goal is to reduce our risk to the lowest practical level and make sure safety is a shared value among all employees, all of us. Uh, Bill, you want to summarize? Yeah, sure thing, Bob. So essentially looking at our list, our goal is to provide a work environment that is free of unacceptable hazards, where there is minimal risk of injury and still provide a high level of productivity. An environment where each of us has a clear understanding of what is expected from our leaders and where we have a strong sense what's expected from each of us. We also want to ensure that you feel empowered that you have a voice and that you can be involved in workplace decisions that ultimately affect the viability of our company. And I believe that we all can agree that having an effective safety culture will help to reinforce that when you are faced with a risk-related decision that the safe choice is always the accepted norm by all. All right, thanks Bill. Anybody else have anything to add or any questions? So in this new culture, what can I expect if I report an accident or incident that was a result of my behavior? Well, everyone has the ability to make behavioral choices that can result in either an accident or incident, either through human error, at-risk behavior, and or reckless behavior. In a just culture, which is where we're heading, each one of those will be dealt with differently. Yeah, uh, for example, in a just culture, those situations that are the result of pure human error are viewed as learning opportunity. At the opposite end of the spectrum is reckless behavior, where an employee consciously chooses to perform an unsafe act. Human error is purely chance or circumstance, and reckless behavior involves a conscious act. So how each situation is dealt with depends on the behavioral choices, and in a just culture, everyone will be evaluated and treated fairly using that scale. All right, everyone good? Thanks for being here. We'll meet again in a couple of weeks to keep moving forward on this. All right, thanks. Thank you. To encourage an effective safety culture, the culture change has to occur at all levels. Getting the discussion started among your employees and staff helps in developing that culture. Remember the meeting we had the other day? What's your perception of our safety culture? Well, we go to simulator training every year. I'm sure the guys in our shop are keeping up with all that maintenance stuff, and we've been flying the same airplane for three years now with no problems. I mean, what more do we need? Yeah, I know what you mean, but it seems like maybe there's more to it than just saying we've never had any problems. I remember a few situations that I wish we'd thought through a little more. Yeah. I kind of remember a couple of those times, but hey, it all turned out all right. And as far as the passengers knew, everything was okay. We all work so well together, I just don't see us having a problem. Yeah, I don't see us getting into trouble either, but maybe our passengers don't realize what they're asking us to do sometimes. I think we should explore this idea of safety culture a little more and see where it fits in. Yeah, maybe so, but let's talk about it after my nap. These last few 18-hour days have me beat. I know what you mean. We can bring this up at our meeting next week. Cultural behavior cannot be purchased, designated, or mandated. It's the result of hard work and a solid foundation. 
The leader plays a key part in its success. Just like a coach, the leader must be fully engaged at every level. He or she must be a visible player in the process, establishing the importance and critical attitudes to immerse the organization in the cultural change. The first step is to create a safety business plan. The plan provides a basic roadmap to outline key objectives, define responsibilities, and provide measurable standards of safety performance. And the target audience includes both management and associates. This document must be reviewed annually by the senior representatives within the flight department, providing the opportunity to engage the organization or a select team in making any necessary process changes based on your growth or evolution. Once the safety business plan is created, it's important to communicate the program contents so everyone on the team is fully aware of the building blocks and performance objectives. The plan becomes the foundation of a cultural shift, defining the safety program as well as the safety management system that should include four key components, safety policies and objectives, safety promotion, safety assurance, and safety risk management. The safety business plan sets management's expectations, showing commitment to safety and how everyone will be held accountable to the standard. Do this by clearly defining what's expected, and then it should be modeled by leaders, passed on during orientation, taught by mentors, included in training, monitored and evaluated, as well as reinforced through recognition and rewards. Engaging the team in every aspect will allow everyone to embrace the safety culture and it will become fully integrated and part of the organization's corporate culture. To create and sustain a safety culture, we as a team must design and integrate safety into the workplace. The visibility of safety metrics, safety programs, signage, and organizational excellence all support the development and identity of our organization's safety culture. Sure, and what we also mean is the development of our safety culture by instilling trust throughout the team. That requires shaping new behaviors based on new concepts and processes throughout our department. I hope you're beginning to see the key building blocks of a just safety culture. Let's make a list. Uh, I'll lead off. Number one, um, a clear easily understood standard operating procedure. Unqualified commitment to safety. Good. How about internal self-analysis? Mm -hmm. The availability of tools and equipment to do the work. Excellent, Zane. Inclusive system of communications. Good, Katie. No retribution for reporting incidents. Definitely, Jennifer. A system for tracking incident and accident data, analysis, reporting, and feedback. Mm -hmm. Safety recognition programs. Yeah. And everybody accepts that safety is a lifestyle, a matter of culture. Good work, everyone. We know where we're going. Making safety the key focus of our organization starts right now. Successful organizations find ways to eliminate the barriers between the various domains and professions in corporate flight departments. How an organization deals with these cultural differences are key to building and fostering a safety culture. Organizational safety should exist across all domains, establishing the importance of everyone's contributions as equal and critical to the safe culture. Celebrating organizational success to fuel the sense of unity and mission creating a spirit of shared commitment, recognizing cultural differences, and reinforcing positive, safe behavior. I was following up on our safety culture work, and I was reading an article about creating a learning environment. The article mentioned that creating a continuous learning environment is about capturing those events or errors, exploring the mistake or failure, and then improving the system or process. Well, let's remember, safety cultures aren't purchased or mandated by leadership. They're the result of hard work, determination, and interactions of a team. Now, cultures are formed by professionals who share a simple methodology of safety principles and set the standard for everyone else to follow. Admitting mistakes happen and being prepared to learn from inadvertent human errors is a key element to our success. I think this will allow everyone to see the culture of change we're going for. They might react cautiously at first,
But I do think if management creates this free flow of information and opinion among us all without the threat of punitive action, then our employees will accept the culture as a learning experience. That's right. Approaches that support our cultural change can include the development of internal safety review processes. Associates are engaged alongside management to conduct self-evaluations, making sure that we're all doing what we expect. Now, this can bring everyone to a higher level of compliance and performance, holds everyone accountable, and is an integral part of the learning process. I see where this self-evaluation team approach could shift the focus from blame to prevention. That seems like a key transitional step to a safety culture. Right again, Dom. And in addition to the self-evaluations, we already talked about collecting vital safety-related data from incidents and accidents, using that information to improve environmental conditions and actions. Now, handling this kind of information wisely is key to enhancing a culture that accepts inadvertent human errors as learning opportunities. Now, once you start the circle of safety and it's transparent to everyone, the quality escalates and risk drops significantly. How we use and handle this information is key to a successful transition to this new culture. There's a great management principle that says if you want performance to improve, measure it. Absolutely and we need to define key cultural performance metrics. Those will allow us to continuously examine our success and opportunities and report our successes and opportunities to our employees. Now the safety committee can play a big part in this reporting of internal occurrences, analysis of events, and the results of our self audits in a way that promotes our safety culture. I can see us measuring things like reportable incidents, accidents, or near misses. I think other valued reporting information could be included. Generalized internal perception surveys, results from internal self-auditing, safety meetings, and formally reporting things like continuous safe work days, associate safe actions, and other safety program enhancements. These are all good ideas. Let's assemble the team and we'll fill this out further. Good work. In recent years, there has been a growing concern over the issue of safety culture within aviation and other complex, high-risk industries. In this video, we've presented a few critical elements for establishing an effective safety culture in your organization. We've reviewed and defined safety culture and safety climate, and highlighted a few of the more beneficial results of establishing a safety culture in your organization. We've shown how important it is to get team members involved in the development of an effective safety culture, and also how critical it is as a leader to demonstrate behaviors and actions that will cultivate an effective safety culture by designing safety into systems and processes, eliminating cultural barriers, creating a learning environment, eliminating blaming and focusing on prevention and developing management information systems that communicate actions and results to encourage sustainability and continuous improvement. Ultimately, implementing an effective safety culture is a business decision that will require the redistribution of resources and the redesigning of systems and processes. From a company perspective, any requirement for resources raises concerns because it affects the bottom line. In that light, safety is good business as it preserves already limited resources. And perhaps most importantly, the customer, the people in the cabin of the aircraft that make available the resources and means to provide the service you do, truly understand the value of safety. And at the end of the day, that's what really counts. Thanks to the following companies for their support in the production of this video. Baldwin Aviation, Citation Air, Greystone Advisors, The Home Depot, Proactive Safety Systems Incorporated, Sanderson Fox.